Today we get to start a new unit and we get to start a new type of digital art with a new kind of intention because we get into our formal vector design part of the class, unit nine. And we've looked at vectors a little bit with our second exercise where we made emojis with vector shapes within Photoshop. Here are some <clears throat> like well-known logos that have been modified. Uh, this was during the pandemic, right? So you have the, the Corona beer logo, which is mostly a logo type, but they say it needs a new name. Uh, if you remember, the Olympics had to be postponed because of the pandemic. And they were worried about social distancing. So we have a version of the Olympics logo where they're all socially distanced. We have LinkedIn, but it, it's turned to locked in. And we have MasterCard, again, distanced. So logos can be incredibly simple. And they're all using vector shapes. But they can really communicate a lot within them if we use them correctly. So we have a question of the day, which we will keep learning about as we're doing this project. Uh, it would be great if you could start it and at least, at least acknowledge it by midnight tonight, but you can finish it anytime through the semester. And it's understanding the difference between vector-based imagery and raster-based imagery. So if you remember from all that the pixel-based art we've been doing, that raster images are based on a square grid of pixels, right? And the problem with that is that for anything that is a curve, it's always going to be created with square pixels. So here you have a circle, and at 600 by 600 pixels, it looks pretty clean. At 300 by 300, it looks pretty clean. At 150 by 150, it looks pretty clean. That's pretty much because that's what this screen is. At 72 by 72, that's standard screen resolution. That should be where it starts to break down. And then at 36 by 36, that's where it really starts to break down here because it's a high def screen. 18 by 18, you start to see those stair stepped edges really clearly. 9 by 9, 4 by 4, right? So when you want a really clean graphic, a clean shape, like it's cut out of black paper, uh, you can't really rely on raster unless it's a really high resolution raster. And then even if it's at print resolution, 300 pixels per inch, and printed on a printer that can print at least 300 dots per inch, you can still detect variations in the edge because they're created with square pixels. So if you want something to be perfectly clean for a t-shirt design, for a graphic, for a logo, you want it to be vector art whenever that's possible. Vector will give you very clean edges, very clean shapes, like it's cut out. And you won't lose anything within the interiors like you do with the basketball net here. So we have a presentation on this, which will help you understand. I'm going to play this video, which was done by one of my first digital honors students. Versus vector graph. And again, this is from the intro of the class too, but he uses the term bitmap instead of raster. It's just an older term for it. Those curves could in turn be used for any number of industrial applications. Here's a leading influence on how CAD and CAM machines work, how 3D models are created, and it's all the site. Because vectors are processed in this way, they don't store a finite number of pixels and can be scaled to an infinite size with no pixelation. This means it can be used for something as small as a stamp to a package like a bottle to a poster, all the way up to a planet sized billboard and can do it all. So that is the power of a vector, is that from one file, it might only be, you know, a couple hundred kilobytes, not even a megabyte size file. You get that application of an image, a graphic, any size you want, anywhere you want, right? So 
We're going to learn a little bit about how to do them. You can watch the rest of the video. It's how you manipulate them. But that's the main way that it's different than, than raster images, right? Vectors allow things to be perfectly sharp and clean at any resolution. That's not a small feat. That is a wonderful thing for, for digital artists. Um, it's ideal for single, single color or simple color shapes with hard edges, which is usually exactly what logos are, right? Limited color. Usually there's a black version and then a color version with clean edges that can go on any kind of material, right? It can go on business cards. It can be embroidered into fabric. And then you want to treat each shape as separate cutouts that are layered on top of each other, just like we did when we made our emoji to keep everything clean and understood. So here's an example of using a vector program. This is the, the freeware that I'll be showing in the afternoon class, vector.com. We're going to use Adobe Illustrator as the professional software in this class. And you just, you draw your lines, you fill them, you fill in what are called your paths with solid colors. And it can look really clean from one file at any resolution. To do that same thing in Photoshop, this is intentionally at kind of like 40 pixels per inch to show you the low res, but you'll get those kind of stair steps. And then for any higher resolution version, you would need new files, right? One way to understand the limitations of raster imaging is to plot it all on graph paper, right? Like you had to do in, in early game design with 8-bit eight, eight uh, pixel design. And now those same characters are designed as vectors, right? And then those vector designs, perfectly clean, can be scaled into raster games or raster programs or made into 3D models. So what's great about vectors is not only do they fill in the flat shapes, you can also output what are called strokes, which are outlines around your shapes. And they can be played with, set to different attributes, thinner or thicker, or they can be removed entirely, right? So the basic components of vector coloring that we'll be using for our color logo is just using what's called flat local color. So Target's flat local color for its logo is what? Red. Red. But is the logo I identifiable when it's solid black? No. Yeah. It is. Yes. Because sometimes you can't print in color, right? And so on internal emails, not emails, let's see, like business cards, where they don't want to print, pay for color ink, right? You can still do that, that logo in black. You can do it in gray. You can do it in all kinds of variations. But if you use color, it's going to be a flat local base color. When they want to add on to this, and we're going to learn this more with digital coloring, coloring, then you can do what's called duotone color. This is hard edge duotone. That's more like cell shading and animation. And then if you want it kind of modeled, you can do soft edge duotone. Now let's get to this, is, this assignment that we're sketching for. You are going to make what's called an iconic logo, or sometimes called a pictorial logo. It's not going to rely on any text. So you are not designing type or text for this assignment. We're going to do that later. So these are some examples of logos. The extinct Twitter logo, the Rolling Stones, uh, Starbucks, Batman, the Obama campaign, Dodge Ram, you know, that use just images. They might have a corresponding logo type that goes with it but they are identifiable with just their, their picture, right, with their icon. Another type is the opposite, called logotypes. And sometimes they're called word marks. That's another word for that. They primarily use text, right? So Coca-Cola has never had an iconic or pictorial logo. It's only ever had the logotype from the early, early 20th century, maybe even the 19th century. Um, Subway, same way. Right. Walmart has that star, but I've never seen that star without the, the logo type, which means when I see a, a five-pointed star, I don't think Walmart, right? Because you need the, the text. IBM, NASA, USA, all of those. Uh, this will help a little bit later. This USA, which is for a TV network, 
yeah, this is a nice example of a play of positive and negative space. It's only black shapes, but it creates different things with the, the white space that's created by the black space. And then, let's see, do I have it here? I think I have it later. There are some, some other kind of famous examples. Now, combined marks are where you see a logo type with the iconic logo together. So Burger King is one where they've always been a combined mark. They haven't been separated out. Adidas has been separated out. You know, either one works on products. NBC has been separated out. A Starbucks now separated it out, but it used to always be a combined mark. And then Nike. Nike kind of separates it out and uses one or the other. And Target as well. Now, what is a good logo? What are we trying to do for this project? Because this is really our first kind of branding project where it's digital art and it's supposed to be self-expressive and it can be for any kind of logo concept you desire. It can be personal. It can be for a friend. It can be like just a whimsical idea. I'm going to suggest a theme which I think is appropriate for the season. But for a logo to be good, it's a little bit different than for artwork to be good. Artwork, you basically just want to engage your viewer as much as possible, right? But a logo needs to be incredibly versatile. It needs to be incredibly clear. You don't want people confused about what they're looking at, right? When you're doing branding for someone. And you want it to be engaging. So you want someone to, to just be affected by it. And so you don't want to have things that really annoy them. But mostly you want it to be clear and versatile, right? Because it needs to be used in so many different ways. So if a client wants a logo, the first thing you want is for it to be clear and for its use to be versatile, which means it can't be too detailed because logos can be used as small as on a business card, which if you squeeze your fingers into like a little sphincter <laughs> as tight as you can, logos can often be printed as small as that space in between your finger, right? And they still need to identify themselves. So logos, in order to be optimized for versatility, are designed in black shapes first, like the CBS logo here. And then color versions can be added. All of these are readable, even in black and white. Now, there's also going to be three basic approaches to logo design I want you to learn for this class. And you're going to have to sketch in all three of them for your idea. So central symmetrical, like the Target logo, like the Shell, like NBC, like CBS, like the Obama campaign, like BP Oil, all of these play with this central symmetrical approach. But notice it's not always perfect symmetry, right? Like the, the beak on the peacock is going to one side rather than the other. And the colors are obviously not matching side to side. But the whole point of this is that your eye goes to the middle and then leaves. Right? It's, it's like a, a badge. They usually rely on horizontals and verticals, perfect circles, sometimes perfect squares. They're very stable, and they're designed for, for maximum impact. In fact, some of these logos even look like explosions. Right? To give a lot of visual impact quickly and unmistakably. Dynamic logos, like Nike, the Rio de Janeiro Olympics, the Rolling Stones, Twitter, these are supposed to be more about movement. So the eye flows across them, and they should your eye should pick up speed as it's moving across the image. So that requires really no use of horizontals or verticals, which slow eye movement. Instead, it's about diagonals and curves. Whether it's a diagonal up or a diagonal down, right? Or looping around. These are dynamic logos. And they always have a direction to them. So if the logo seems to have a direction to it, that's more dynamic. And then the one that prioritizes engagement, sometimes beyond clarity, which is an interesting strategy, and you don't see it all that often, is one that plays with positive and negative space. So you get more information than just the black shape. You get whatever is the black shape makes. So this is for a, a zoo in Germany, a very clever logo where you have a scene with a giraffe and a rhino and some trees and a star, but it also makes this elephant. 
you have, oh, what is this for? It's like a relationship site. 